So um, hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be uh, going through a short tutorial on how to model a non-contact thermometer using a computer-aided design software or a CAD for short. Uh, and the software we're going to be using is called Onshape. Uh, so I hope everyone has uh, created their account and uh, is logged in successfully. So you should see a page uh, similar to this. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, and jump right in. You can click on the blue create button on the top left hand corner of your screen and click on the create document button. So now we can uh, give our document a name. So I'll call it non-contact thermometer and click on the OK button. We give it a while um, and we'll be presented with uh, the workspace where we can model our non-contact thermometer. Now in the workspace, uh, there will be uh, a few areas to take note. Firstly is the top bar. So this is where you can find uh, all the tools that you will need to draw and model your, your solid or your non-contact thermometer. Uh, also, you will see your uh, feature tree. Now, this is where uh, all of the things that you draw will be listed here and you can go and click on it later on to edit. Um, you will also see three planes. Now, a plane is just uh, a flat surface uh, in, in 3D space. Because this is 3D, you need to have a way to locate um, where your drawings are. And so these three planes are called the front, the right and the top and they are all perpendicular to each other. Uh, and they all intersect at uh, one point, which is called the origin, which is right here in the middle. Uh, you can click on your right mouse button and hold and drag uh, your cursor around. So this rotates uh, your view. Uh, you can also press the middle mouse button and hold and move or pan uh, your view around without rotating. Uh, you can also zoom in and out by using your scroll wheel. And you can also use the viewing cube on the top right hand corner to align yourself. So if I want to view at the right, uh, I click on the right side of the cube. You can click on the arrows, it will rotate. Uh, you can also uh, click on the corners of the cube. So this will bring you to uh, an angled view. Uh, alternatively, you can right click on blank space and select isometric. Now this will bring you to the default view. Another thing uh, to note is that you can select objects in Onshape with the left click. So left click once and you will select the object. Uh, click on the object again and you will deselect it. Okay, so this is selecting and deselecting. You will notice the number next to your cursor. Uh, this indicates the number of objects that you currently have selected. You can deselect everything by pressing the space bar. You can also deselect by clicking on empty space. So this is useful if you only uh, you want to select something else uh, entirely. So, okay, we want to start off by creating a sketch. So the sketch button is in the top left hand corner. Okay, and what a sketch is, is basically a 2D drawing, uh, drawing on a flat uh, surface. And so you will see a, a box uh, pop up over here and it's prompting us to enter, uh, select a sketch plane. Now any blue uh, shaded box is generally prompting us uh, for a selection or an input. So over here, we need to select a sketch plane. And uh, so sketches need to be on a flat surface. Otherwise, the software will not know where you are drawing that sketch on. So uh, let's use the right plane uh, as a starting point. Okay, so go ahead, click once, uh, left click on the right plane. And so now you're placing, you're telling the software you want to start your sketch uh, on this uh, flat plane. And to align yourself to this, you can either click on the viewing cube, which is uh, the one on the top right hand corner, or you can right click and select view normal to. Okay, normal meaning uh, 90 degrees. So view normal to, and you will now be viewing the right plane it on. So uh, in, in these softwares, there are usually multiple ways to achieve uh, the same, same outcome. Uh, if you wanted to, you could rotate it uh, by using the cube. You could use view normal to, you could use view normal to sketch plane. All of these uh, will work equally well. Okay, so now we are viewing our sketch uh, perpendicularly and we want to begin by drawing a rectangle. So 
look at the top bar and you will see a rectangle tool. Um, and if you click on the arrow next to the, the rectangle, you will see there are two types of rectangles. Uh, you can draw a corner rectangle where you specify two corners or you specify uh, a center point and draw a center point rectangle. So we want uh, a center point rectangle. So go ahead and click on it. Okay, so now we have the center point rectangle. Uh, if your tool is selected, you will see it shaded in blue. Uh, and at any point of time, if you want to deselect your tool, press the escape key. And you can see the tool is no longer selected. Okay, so we want our tool to be selected. So go ahead and click on it. Okay. Uh, and uh, this can be a little fiddly at times because sometimes the tool will be deselected without you expecting it. So uh, you need to pay attention to whether your tool is uh, switched on or off. Okay, so now our rectangle tool is switched on and we want to draw our first uh, shape. So hover your cursor over the origin and you'll notice there is a, there's a square uh, appearing. This means that uh, it is snapping to that point. We want to start at the origin. So go ahead, click once. Okay, left click once and move your cursor away. Now you see a rectangle being formed and it doesn't matter uh, how far you drag it because we will specify how big the rectangle is later on. So right now, uh, just you know, left click again to stop the tool anywhere and you will see uh, the shape has been completed. Okay, uh, press the escape key to deselect the tool or you can click on the tool to deselect it. Okay, uh, and you, if you click on the corner of the rectangle, you will notice you can drag it around. This is uh, related to the color of the lines. So if you see the lines are in blue, it means the sketch is not defined. It doesn't know how big it needs to be. Okay, so now we want to specify exactly how big it needs to be. So let's use the dimension tool right in the middle of the sketch bar over here. Okay, so click on the dimension tool and move to the middle of the top, uh, top edge. So you will see it uh, turning orange. Click once, left click, and move your cursor upwards. Okay, so it uh, doesn't matter where you place this because this doesn't affect the actual dimension. Uh, this is just uh, to allow you to move it to a place where it's convenient. So left click again and you will you know, fix the position of your arrows. Uh, and let's give this rectangle a, a length of 110 uh, millimeters, 110. And we can press the enter key and this will complete the dimension. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you need to make sure that your units are uh, in millimeters. So, um, and that can be found in the settings. So it can be found in workspace units. So we want to make sure we are in millimeters and kilograms and degrees. Okay, if not, if they're not correct, uh, please uh, click on the arrow and change to millimeters. And then click on the right, uh, the middle of the right edge. Okay. Um, the reason I specify the middle uh, is because you can also dimension by clicking the top and bottom, uh, but that's uh, not necessary right now. So let's just click on the middle and left click again so that we fix the position of our arrows. And then we want to give this 150 millimeters uh, dimension. Okay, I'm going to pause here for a moment in case you need more time uh, to reach this. So this, uh, the black lines indicate that our sketch is fully defined and that uh, if you deselect all your tools by pressing escape, you can no longer uh, drag it around uh, like before. Okay. And to complete your sketch, uh, now that we are done with the sketch, press the, the green checkbox. Okay. In general, if you want to exit from a feature or a sketch, you can press the green checkbox. Uh, pressing the red, uh, pressing the red cross just removes any of the things that you have done. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep what we have done. So press the green checkbox. Okay. Uh, and uh, at any one point of time, uh, you can open a closed sketch or anything else in this feature tree by double clicking. And you can change the dimensions if you want by double clicking. Okay, but we are not uh, changing anything right now. So 
press the escape key and press the green checkbox. Okay, so now we are um, we are done with our first sketch. Let's extrude our first solid. So extrude means to, to add volume from a sketch. Um, so we can click on the extrude tool, which is uh, the top left hand corner of your toolbar. Click once. Okay, and you will notice uh, you're extruding a solid and we want to create a new solid. These are, we can leave these settings as here. And once again, you see a blue box, a box shaded in blue. You can select a face or sketch region. Now we want to select our sketch that we just draw, the rectangle. Okay, so let's click on the rectangle. And you will notice uh, there is a volume being created. That's exactly what extrude means. Uh, so in general, uh, most CAD softwares work the same way. Uh, what you want to do is you want to create a two-dimensional sketch and then you extrude uh, a volume to your sketch. Uh, and you keep doing uh, the same steps until you reach uh, the shape you want. And most CAD softwares work uh, on a similar, uh, similar principle. Okay, so uh, we want to change the end condition. The end condition tells uh, the, the sketch or the, the extrude when to stop. So this blind setting means you want to stop it at a 25 millimeter depth. Uh, we want to use the symmetric condition. So go ahead and uh, click on the, the, the field, the drop down box, and select symmetric. Okay, this means we want it to come out equally on both sides. Uh, this just centers our model about the right plane, which is, uh, is going to be handy if you want to draw anything in the middle. Okay, so once again, ensure that your end condition, uh, end type, is called symmetric. Change the depth to 40 millimeters. 40. Okay. 40 millimeters. So this uh, the preview will reflect the thickness of the solid that we want. And we can go ahead and click on the green checkbox to complete our extrude. Okay, there you have it. Once again, if at any point of time you need to edit what you just did, you can double click on the feature and you know change. Uh, something if you need to. Okay, so you can go ahead and click on the green checkbox to complete. All right, and now uh, we can let's go ahead and create uh, our next sketch. We want to do it on the this surface of our solid. So we can left click and uh, sorry, we can right click and select view normal tool over here. Okay, so this gives us a head on view. Uh, and we want to create a sketch. Now, uh, you can create a sketch, uh, specify where the sketch is two ways. Uh, you can do it like what I mentioned previously by clicking the sketch tool on the top left hand corner and then selecting your sketch plane. Or you can click on the surface uh, before you specify your sketch. Now, both of these work. As I mentioned earlier on, there are many ways to uh, accomplish the same outcome in, in, in this software. Okay, so the, the outcome we want is that we want uh, the sketch plane to be on the right side of uh, our solid. Okay, so this is now on the right side of our solid. Okay, uh, and what we want to do is to draw uh, a straight line. So there is a line tool which allows us to draw lines in the toolbar over here. You can look for it, it's on the left hand side. So click on the line tool, it will turn blue to indicate that it has been selected. Move your cursor to the bottom edge of your solid. Okay, you see the line turn uh, orange and click once, okay, left click once. And if you drag your cursor upwards, you will notice uh, a line starting to form. And if you move it side, side to side, you will notice uh, it wants to snap to a vertical orientation. And, and that is what we want. We want to snap to a vertical orientation. So uh, that once again, the length doesn't matter. You will specify the length later on. We can click on the vertical orientation, uh, click, click to terminate the line while it is vertical and press the escape key. Okay, so we will have a line being fully, uh, sorry, not fully specified, but a line being drawn. To fully specify the line, we will need to dimension the line. So remember the dimension tool, uh, it gives a known length and also make sure that none of your other tools are selected. So you only want the dimension tool to be selected. Go ahead, click on the line, uh, the middle of the line once again, and move your cursor to the right. Okay. Uh, and left click again, you will be able to specify the line to be 45 millimeters. Uh, if, uh, one, uh, one thing I would like to mention is that if any one part of time you 
uh, you know, click something wrongly or you messed up, you can always press the Ctrl Z uh, button to undo what you have just done. Okay, uh, and you can give it a go. Give it uh, another go. Right. Uh, okay, so we wanted to specify the line to be 45 millimeters. And let's deselect the dimension tool or press the escape key. Make sure nothing is selected. Let's uh, zoom in on the bottom of our line and click and hold on the bottom point. And we can move our line around. Right. We want to move it to the middle and let go. Now this uh, allows our line to snap to the middle of our solid. And it will turn uh, black in color. So that means it's fully specified. Okay. All right, so now uh, let's use uh, another tool. This is called the, the arc tool. What this lets us do is it lets us draw a, an arc. Okay, uh, once again, click on the arrow next to the arc tool. You want to draw the center point up. Okay, so um, once again, if you can't find it, click on the arrow and select center point arc. Okay. Make sure it is uh, in shaded in blue. Move your cursor uh, anywhere along the vertical line. Okay. And click once. And you'll notice uh, a circle being formed. Uh, you can left click again once on the top of your line. And that you that will specify the first part of your arc. Okay. And drag your cursor all the way to touch the right edge. And left click once and you will see uh, an arc being drawn okay you'll notice the arc is blue in color because we have not specified uh, where the uh, where the center point needs to be uh, and we want to make these two uh, horizontal meaning we want them to be side by side so deselect your tool uh, by pressing the escape key or clicking on your tool again and let's drag uh, our point to see if it snaps okay yeah, it doesn't snap uh, no worries, we can select both of them. Remember, uh, just click the point 1 and click the point 2. And you will notice you have two items being selected. Okay, that is what we want. And you can go ahead and look for the, the horizontal relation. Okay, so um, some of you might be able to find it uh, in the top bar. If you can't, look for the arrow at the end and select horizontal. Alternatively, you could press the H shortcut. So pressing the letter H will make your lines horizontal. Okay. And so you notice now your two points are horizontal and your arc is fully specified. All right. And we can go ahead and click on the line tool. Uh, so our sketch right now is not complete because we need to close the sketch uh, so that our uh, our software knows uh, this is a separate region from the other regions because right now it doesn't actually enclose any region so we can select the line tool okay uh, once again the line tool is in the top left hand corner and we can click on the top of our arc click once uh, and move your cursor down to the bottom and it will snap to the corner and you can click once again all right and then we want to click one more time at the bottom of the last line and then the shape will be complete okay and we can uh, press the green checkbox to complete our sketch so you will see we have uh, our new uh, shape over here okay uh, we can go ahead and click on the extrude tool and we want to remove uh, so Select the extrude tool, solid, and click on the remove button. Okay, and let's select this region that we have just drawn. And you will notice uh, a portion of it has been removed. Okay, so that's exactly what, uh, what we're trying to do. However, we want to change the end type. Okay, uh, from being a pre-specified depth to up to the next surface. So this removes material all the way up to the next side. Okay, and that's uh, that's what we're aiming for. Once again, extrude, solid, remove, select the face that we were trying to remove. 
okay, and click up to next, and then click on the green checkbox. Okay, let's create another sketch. So select the sketch uh, tool, and we want to sketch on the right side again. So, so let's select uh, the right plane. Okay, and let's uh, right click to view normal to our right plane, or you can click on the right uh, cube, right side of the cube. Okay, uh, we want to start by drawing a, a line. So we can go ahead and click on the line tool. And we want our line to start at the top. So go ahead and click once. And drag your line out. Uh, drag it out at an angle uh, because we want this line to be slanted later on. But once again, the exact length uh, isn't too important. And left click again to complete your line. Okay. And press the escape key. Uh, in uh, some of you may have noticed that uh, there's uh, there are other ways to draw objects instead of clicking and uh, letting go. You can also click and hold to drag, and the moment you release, you will also complete your line. Uh, that is uh, another way you can draw lines and rectangles and any other shape. So um, if you've uh, you know experienced that, you can go ahead. And use that, but I will be using the click and release method. Okay, so once again, select your line tool, click once, move it out, and click again. Okay, and press the escape key. Now, this will complete our line. Uh, we want to dimension our line, so once again, move your cursor over to the dimension button or press the shortcut. Uh, so, most of these tools have shortcuts to make it uh, faster. Uh, so, you can use the, the D key uh, to select the dimension. To toggle the dimension tool okay and uh, we want this time to click on the bottom edge uh, the bottom point of your of your line so click on the bottom point okay and then click on the top line so this uh, dimensions the the vertical length okay and uh, let's move this uh, dimension over to the left hand side uh, and we want this to be 52 so go ahead and make it 52 millimeters uh, and with the dimension tool still selected, let's click once on our line. And then uh, click on the top edge. Click once. Okay, you'll notice uh, this specifies the angle of our line. And then uh, let's just click again so that we can key in the angle. And that is 75 uh, degrees. Okay, and we can press uh, the enter key. So this uh, specifies uh, the length of the line and the angle. And the last thing that we need to specify is the distance, uh, uh, the, the position of the top point. So we want the top point. So we can click the top point once, and then click on the left edge, click once. Then you'll notice uh, you can specify the horizontal distance. Okay, let's just uh, move this uh, above here so you can see. Okay, uh, and we want this to be 28 millimeters. Okay, I'll give a uh, few moments uh, for this. For this, uh, okay, pause here for a while. Okay, uh, and then next we want to draw another line. So go ahead, click on the line tool. And we want to draw uh, two more lines, in fact. Okay, so click once on the bottom point uh, of your of your first line and drag out the second line at an angle. Uh, you may notice an uh, orange line being formed. This is the software trying to snap your line somewhere. Uh, if possible, avoid all of this and you know just go, go further away. Okay? And then drag your line all the way down. Uh, doesn't matter where, it helps to avoid uh, any snap. So if you see any orange features being highlighted, try and avoid that. Okay, and click again uh, on the bottom line, bottom edge. And we can uh, press the escape key. So we will have a, a, a jagged line. Okay, and we can go ahead to specify this jagged line. So let's use the dimension tool. Click on the, the, the point uh, at the corner. And then click on the bottom edge. Okay, drag it out to the left. And we can specify this to be 94. Uh, and we want to specify this point at the bottom. So let's click on this point. 
Put it on the right leg. And lastly, we want to specify this point in the heel of the toe. And we want this to be 28 millimeters. And we will have a fully specified jagged line. Okay, once again, we want to close our sketch region. So let's click on the line tool. And we can click on the bottom. And then at the corner. And then at the top corner. And then at the top line. Okay, this will fully close uh, the shape. Okay. Alright, uh, let's click on the green checkbox. This completes our sketch. We can click on the extrude tool. So uh, once again, we want to remove. So make sure you've gotten uh, extrude, solid, remove, and then we want to select the region. Uh, if your region is already pre-selected, uh, it will also show you the same. Uh, and we want to select up to next. Okay, so this uh, removes material all the way up to the next uh, face. Okay, and then click on the green checkbox. This will complete uh, the beginnings of our thermometer. All right, let's uh, start adding some uh, other features to our thermometer. We want first to use the fillet tool. So a fillet is basically uh, a way to round sharp edges in our solid. So go ahead, click on the fillet tool. We click once. And once again, we can select an entity to, 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 to fill it. And we want to select this, uh, this edge, uh, specifically just the line, not the, not the flat surface, but the line. So make sure only the line is being selected. Uh, rotate your model to, to look for the, the corner, this crevice, and then click once on the line. Okay, if you've accidentally selected the wrong thing, uh, don't, don't worry about it. You can always click again to remove it from your selection. Uh, alternatively, you can press the delete, uh, the, the delete symbol uh, on, on the selection. Okay, so you've gotten this corner selected in particular. And let's change the radius. So it's another uh, few we can edit to 12 millimeters. Okay, so we've gotten this uh, selected. Okay, uh, and what we are going to do is uh, click on the green checkbox and this will complete uh, this feature. So there you have a nice rounded uh, edge over here. After you've done that, uh, we're going to fill it uh, some more edges. So go ahead and click on the fillet tool again. And this time we're going to select the four edges of our handle. So this will be the, the handle of the thermometer. If, uh, if this is a continuous line without a sharp, uh, sharp bend, you only need to click once and it will apply the feature to the entire line. Okay. So we want to do four corners. One, two, you can look at the preview to see uh, where it will fill it. Three and four. Okay, so you've got then all four corners. Okay, in addition to the four corners at the bottom, we want to fill it the top of our thermometer as well. So look, uh, look over here. You see this uh, top rectangle? We only want the long edges of the rectangle. So two edges, the long edges of the rectangle. Click once. Okay. Once again, if you select something uh, by mistake, uh, for example, if you click the center, you can always press the, the delete button or you can select uh, the surface again. That will remove it from the selection. You will unselect. Okay. Now you've gotten uh, four at the bottom, two on the top. Change the radius to 12 and press the enter key. So you have a larger... Uh, larger fillet and press the green checkbox. Okay, there you have a uh, nice rounded uh, edges. All right, next uh, let's add some more features. So uh, click on the back uh, of our thermometer. So the the two uh, faces. This is the front and this is the back. The back is the slanted edge. So let's uh, right click on the back and select view normal tool. Okay, so this uh, this gives us a view of the back. Hit on, and click on create new sketch. 
Okay. Uh, if your sketch plane isn't already selected, click on the, the, the this surface, the back surface, and you'll see uh, the sketch plane is now selected. And uh, let's use the offset tool. So an offset is basically um, following the same line but at a certain distance. So if you click on the offset tool right in the middle over here, and you click on uh, this surface, the the oval, the rounded rectangle surface, click once, you will notice a faint outline of um, of what looks like uh, the same outline but at a smaller size. And you will notice um, you can drag the arrow to change the size. Uh, let's press the enter key and we will be allowed to change the, the dimension. Okay, And we want this to be 4 millimeters on the inside. So press 4 and enter. Uh, okay. And uh, I'm going to just drag this uh, so that it's easier to see. Make sure you deselect any tools before trying to drag. Otherwise, it will not work. Uh, okay, uh, so make sure that we select the offset tool uh, if it's not already selected. And we want to click on the rear surface again. Okay, and this time uh, we want to offset it outwards. So click on the, the white arrow and drag it to the outside. Okay. And you will see there's an outline of the shape uh, on the outside. And press the enter key. And we want two millimeters of uh, external offset. And press the enter key. And this will fix uh, the shape. And press the green checkbox. So now we have uh, a nice uh, border for our screen. Uh, we can go ahead, click on the extrude tool again, which is in the top left hand corner. Uh, and let's click uh, add. Extrude, solid, add. And we want uh, to select uh, the, the region that we have just drawn. Alternatively, we can move our cursor on the left and select Sketch 4. And this will uh, you know, select the region for us. Right? Uh, if you don't manage to do that, you can click on the regions that you want. So basically, uh, anything that is uh, enclosed can be a region. Don't worry if you select the wrong region. You can click on it again, or you can just clear everything and try again. Okay, so select the correct region that you want to extrude, and select the depth to be uh, three millimeters. Okay, so now you have a nice uh, three millimeter border, and click on the green checkbox. Now we have a border for our thermometer. Okay, uh, and now let's add a sensor cutout for our front surface. So let's select the sketch tool again. And let's click on the front surface. Uh, if you're not uh, viewing it head on, you can click. Uh, sorry, this is the this is the back for some reason. Okay, you can click on uh, the back or you can click view normal tool. Okay. And what we want to do is uh, to draw two circles. Uh, if, if you are able to, uh, try to snap to the middle of, uh, of the shape. So click uh, for, to select the circle tool, uh, make sure that uh, it is a center point circle. Uh, once again, the circle tool is on the top left hand corner. Click on the circle tool and click once. Uh, try to click in the middle of our shape. Click once and move your cursor. And click again anywhere. Uh, the diameter will be specified later on. So draw one circle nearer the top and draw another circle nearer the bottom. Okay. And now uh, we want to dimension our circles. So click on the dimension tool. And click on the outer edge of the circle. Okay, only the outer edge. Don't click uh, on the middle because that will specify the radius. We want to specify the diameter. So click once and you will be able to specify the circle. So we want the top circle uh, to be six millimeters, and we want the bottom circle to be 18 millimeters. Okay, uh, let's give it a go. And we want to specify where the circles are. So hopefully you've managed to snap uh, your circles to the middle. If you haven't, uh, make sure you deselect any of your tools and try and drag, drag your circles so that they snap uh, to the middle. Uh, but my circles have already snapped to the middle. If your circles uh, are not snapped, you can drag them and snap to the middle, like, like so. 
and release. Okay, so this will make your circle aligned, uh, but we don't want that circle. So two circles, one small, one large, snap to the middle, and let's use the dimension tool. You click the center of the circle. So normally when you dimension a circle, you dimension uh, relative to the center. Uh, but there are cases where you dimension to the edge. So this time, click the center of the top circle and the top edge. Okay, and drag it out. And we want this to be eight millimeters. And let's repeat the same with the bottom, the center of the bottom circle and the center of the top circle. And drag it to the left. We want this to be 22 millimeters. Okay. Okay, let's click on the green checkbox and click on the extrude uh, tool. Okay, I'll move the cursor over to the left and select uh, sketch file. Click once. Uh, so we want solid, sorry, we want solid remove sketch file. Okay, click on sketch file. And we want to select a depth of uh, 8 millimeters. And you will see there's an indentation uh, for our sensor. And click on the green checkbox. And so this uh, gives our thermometer some sensor openings. Okay, and we can, um, we can click over here. Uh, click on the right edge of our thermometer. We're gonna add some more features over here. And click select view normal tool. Okay, uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, an indentation on the right side. So let's click create new sketch, and click on the right side uh, of our thermometer. And we're gonna draw a rectangle. So if you remember how we did it, we click center point rectangle, and we're just gonna place the center somewhere where it doesn't snap to uh, anything. So click once, move your cursor, and click again. Size uh, doesn't matter, we're going to specify the size uh, right now. So click on the dimension button, and then click on the top edge. Okay. And we want the rectangle to be 45 millimeters long. And click on the right edge of the rectangle, and we want this to be 20 millimeters tall. Okay. And now, uh, let's dimension the position of our rectangle. So we want the center point of our rectangle uh, to, to be dimensioned relative to the, the origin, which is this dot over here. So click on the, the origin and drag your dimension out to the right. Now, if you drag it uh, anywhere else, it will be dimensioning a different position. So make sure you drag it uh, straight to the right. Okay. And click once to lock the position in place. And we want this to be 50 millimeters, 5, 0. Make sure you drag your dimension to the right, yeah? Okay, once again, click on the center point of our rectangle and the origin, and drag your, your dimension to the bottom. Make sure it is not uh, slanted. So you want this to be straight down, okay? And we want this to be 12 uh, millimeters. Okay, I'm just gonna move this uh, so you can see. Okay, uh, and we are going to do a sketch fillet. So this is, this is a feature that adds uh, a fillet to our sketch. So look for the sketch fillet button, click on it. And uh, what we want to do is we want to select two edges of our, our rectangle. So let's click on the top edge and the bottom edge, uh, sorry, the, the left edge. And you will see there's a curve being formed. Okay, and let's click on our left mouse button again. Uh, this allows us to specify the radius. We're going to leave it at 5, uh, so we can just press uh, the Enter button. Okay, and uh, let's continue uh, adding more fillets. So select the left edge and the bottom edge, and click on the left mouse button. Okay, and press the Enter key. And select the bottom edge and the right edge. And we can repeat uh, the process for the top right-hand corner. So this gives our rectangle uh, a nice rounded edge. And click on the green checkbox to complete uh, the sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude um, this sketch. So click on extrude, solid, remove, and click on uh, the sketch that uh, we just drew. Okay, so you will see the sketch being uh, removed. 
Let's change the depth to 0 0.5. Because we only want just a tiny bit. Okay, and click on the green tick. So this gives us a nice uh, indentation. Okay, we're going to add buttons to this uh, indentation. So right click on the indentation and select view normal tool. And let's create a, a new sketch. Okay, uh, when selecting the sketch plane, let's just select uh, the indentation rectangle. Left click. And let's select the center point circle tool. Okay. And move uh, our cursor to the top edge. Look for the middle point. This is the midpoint of the top edge. And slowly move your cursor downwards. And you will see a dotted line being formed. This means that we are aligned to the middle of uh, the top edge. Okay. Uh, once again, trace your cursor to the middle of the top edge. Drag your, drag your cursor down. And click once to start your circle. Okay. Uh, once again, doesn't matter too much how big your circle is. We will dimension it. Okay, so let's uh, dimension our circle. Click on the dimension tool. Click on the outer edge of your circle. And we want uh, our circle to be 8 millimeters big. Okay. Uh, and to position the circle uh, vertically, click on the line tool. Click once. And this time you want to create a construction line. So click on the construction button uh, right over here. Okay. Once again, make sure your line tool is selected. Then change it to a construction line. So the difference between a construction line and a normal line is that uh, the construction lines aren't used when extruding uh, or removing material. They're just used to guide your sketches. Okay, So click once uh, on the center of the circle. And then let's click on the left edge, the midpoint of the le left edge. So to find the midpoint, once again, trace the left edge until you find uh, a pop-up, a square. And then click to stop the line and press escape. So you see a dotted line uh, following your circle. Okay, and click on the dotted line and press the H key or look for uh, the horizontal relation in the drop down. Right, it's just a straight line, it says horizontal. Okay, so now we have a fully specified circle. Okay, and let's go ahead and draw two more circles. So click on the center point circle and just draw two more circles uh, in line with your first circle. So uh, use the, the dotted line to guide your circle and uh, once again trace the dotted line uh, by, by pulling your cursor to the right. It will snap and uh, show a horizontal uh, relation. Click once and click again. Okay, now you have three circles. Okay, uh, deselect your circle tool uh, make, or press the escape key. Make sure nothing is selected and select both of your circles. Okay. And we want to look for the equal uh, relation, or you can press the E key on your keyboard. Okay, press uh, the, the E key or equal. And now both these circles are equal. Uh, and we want actually all three of them to be equal. So we should have selected uh, all three of them and selected the equal relation. Yes, and there we have all three circles that are equal. Uh, this means whenever we change uh, the dimension of the center circle, the other two circles will change their dimensions as well. Okay, all three circles. And lastly, we want to dimension the centers of each circle to be 12 millimeters apart. Okay, once again, to do that, click on the dimension tool, click on the center of the circle and the center of the other circle. And this allows you to specify 12 millimeters. Okay, and click on the green checkbox to exit the sketch. All right, so now you have three circles. And we want to extrude um, the sketch that we just did. So click on the extrude uh, button and click on sketch 7. And you will see uh, the buttons being extruded. Uh, we only want uh, one millimeter depth for this. Go ahead, click on the green checkbox. Okay, uh, we are almost done with our thermometer. Okay, uh, last, uh, the last feature that we want to add is on the right plane. So left click on the right plane and click sketch uh, or alternatively you could click, click on sketch and then on the right plane doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, make sure you are looking normal to the right plane by pressing the N key or by clicking view normal tool 
and let's draw the trigger for the thermometer. So we'll use the line tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, uh, a four-sided figure. So let's start from uh, somewhere about here. Make sure nothing is snapping. So click once, try and uh, trace a horizontal line. If you're unable to get a horizontal line, it doesn't matter, we can fix it later. So trace a horizontal line, click again to uh, end this segment, and then drag the line out at an angle. Uh, and click again. And drag your line in at that angle, make sure it's not uh, snapping to anything. Okay. And then uh, join the line back to uh, the first. Okay, so you have this uh, four-sided figure with uh, at least one line being horizontal. Okay, and so uh, first thing we want to dimension is the bottom of the figure. So we're going to do that by using the dimension tool. Click on the bottom point and the bottom edge uh, of, of our sketch. Okay. And we want this to be 65. Okay, next we want to dimension uh, the top line from the top point from the bottom point. So click on both the points and drag to the left. And we want this to be 28. Okay. And next we want these two lines. So click on uh, the top line first, then the line on the right. We want these two lines to be 100 degrees. Okay, lastly, we want the two, uh, the last corner over here to have an angle of 75 degrees. Oh, sorry. Uh, we want these two to be 75 degrees. Okay, uh, and the last... Uh, thing to specify this is we want the line on the left so make sure you deselect everything click on the line on the left and press the V key now this makes uh, the line vertical okay and we want to dimension uh, the top line so the top line should be 22 millimeters okay and uh, what what we're gonna need to dimension? Uh, the last thing is to dimension the bottommost point uh, with the edge of our thermometer. So we want this to be five millimeters. Uh, however, this uh, is actually pointing the wrong way. So we want uh, this. To be on the inside so let's drag it in and let's try the dimension one more time okay so it's five millimeters on the inside and we can complete our sketch okay uh, and to finish this uh, feature off Let's click the extrude button and click on sketch A. Okay, we want this uh, to be symmetric and we want it to be 10 millimeters. So you notice it will be formed in the middle. Okay, and click on the green checkbox. There you have a nice trigger. And the last thing we want to add is a fillet. So click on the fillet tool and let's just round off that, uh, the edge of the trigger with a five millimeter fillet. Okay, and there you have it, uh, thermometer. Um, you can customize the thermometer by uh, right clicking and adding an appearance to a face. So right click and add, click add appearance and you can change uh, the color of uh, any surface you, you want. Uh, and if you want to add uh, another color, right click again and select add appearance to face and click another color. You can customize your thermometer to uh, whatever you want it to look like. Okay, thanks for watching.